when was the last time you did something purely for yourself without thinking about what other people thought? I have definitely been there. My wake up call was when I was telling my friend about how I had lost some weight and I was in the gym and I was just like in awe of what I saw in the mirror and just so proud. So I took a picture and I was gonna make a Instagram story of it, but then I kind of froze up because I couldn't do that. Like that would be showing off and what about my friends who are also on a weight loss journey? Like that would just be rubbing in their face. When I mentioned that to my friend and my whole thought process, he was like, Kristen, you care too much about what people think. Just post a picture. It wasn't that conversation. I was like, man, he's right. I do listen to people or think about what people think way too frequently. Because after that conversation, I started to notice there are times when I would just have an idea or I'm about to do something and then I stop and I'm like, oh, I can't do that because so-and-so would think this or this could come across poorly and then I don't do it. And what's funny is they're usually really small things. I, I did start this whole process that's helped me the last, I don't know, like three months I've been doing this and it's been so helpful. Actually, I think it's been longer because it's one of the reasons why I've been posting on Instagram more frequently is because I go through this process where, okay, I have this cool video clip or I have this, I have this hot picture and I want to post it and then I pause and then I'm just like, oh, then I'm like, wait, why am I hesitating? That's the first question you ask yourself. Why am I hesitating? And usually the, the answer is, oh, because of so-and-so, because of this person. And then the follow-up question, question number two you ask yourself is, will this matter in three years? Pretty much every single time I ask that, the answer is no. And as soon as I hear no, no in my mind, I say out loud, so what? And then I just go ahead and do the dang thing. Like that's my whole process. <laughs> Why am I hesitating? Will this matter in three years? No. So what? Do the thing. It's helped a lot. <laughs> it's helped a lot with my social media anxiety. And I really hope you can use that to your advantage as well. I wrote down some other things in my notes. I uh, hope you don't mind me going back and forth on here. It's almost like our mind is tricking us. Like, it tries to validate the reason why we need to ask other people. Like, oh, I'm being empathetic, I'm being thoughtful by thinking of this person. No, no, the, mm, 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 stop. Just live your life, do the dang thing, stop overthinking. No one's gonna know or remember in three years, regardless of whether or not they like what you did. If you don't like it, they're not gonna remember in three years. If they do like it, you're not gonna remember in three years. Do what you wanna do. All right, so the next thing I have on here is you don't trust yourself to make good decisions. That's kind of a part of what I just talked about is just asking someone for advice with every little thing, uh, whether it's buying something to what you're gonna wear, to especially like to what you should say, how you should respond to someone's text message, what you should say to someone's text message or action. All of that is really draining. It's time draining, it's emotionally draining, and it's draining your own life of happiness. So we just gotta cut it out. The other reason why you're feeling the way you feel is because you aren't honest about what you, you're not honest about what you actually want. And usually this comes down to two things. It's either you're afraid to be honest and just say what you want because it's either unconventional or someone has already told you not to do it or you're just simply scared. There's, there's many reasons to be afraid to actually open up and just be real. Totally a part of our human experience. That's how I was with wanting to get out of tech, wanting to play drums in a band, um, so many things. And I think we hold ourselves back a lot because of fears, especially people who have desires that are unconventional. And the second reason why you may not know what you want to do, because you've been living your whole life doing what other people have told you to do. And you've never had the opportunity to think outside the box, to think about what you truly want. And because you've been following the leader for so long, you've lost a sense of yourself. And that's something you definitely need to find. And to do that, it's, I mentioned this a lot, but it's so helpful for so many, so many things in our lives. It's just go for a walk 
without headphones, don't listen to music, listen to the movement of your mind, like going to different places, different topics. You'll hear your inner voice, you'll hear mental chatter, and you'll begin to just filter out what actually is your beliefs, your thoughts, your experiences, and just start to recognize what's actually what other people's beliefs, thoughts, expectations are of you. And just do some sorting. And this won't, this won't create any realiz realizations in just your first 30 minute walk. But trust me, over time, you'll start to get a better understanding of your true self and especially your your inner voice if you've been ignoring her for what three three decades now <laughs> you'll start to get to know her more and better understand like your gut instincts are versus what you should and shouldn't be doing i hope that makes sense i think by doing that you're going to start to gravitate towards things that are naturally in line with who you are and you're definitely gonna have to get the courage to do those things. Obviously start small. And it's gonna feel a little scary, it may feel a little uncomfortable because it's not something you've done before. But that's the right thing to do. Oh gosh, this one is like, I had a conversation with a friend about this next one and it's about surrounding yourself with people you can't fully be yourself around. The first thing I think about is working in corporate, working in office, and I think all of us can understand like working in an office is totally different than being around your childhood best friend who knows you. And those are two totally different concepts. Like that's something we have to do as far as being professional. But as far as your friends uh, outside of work, your, your family members, your partner, people you go to for advice, people you look up to, how do you feel in those relationships and friendships? Think about this. like your physical body, your mental and emotional aspects. So physical body, are you stressed? Are you tense? What's your body language like? Are you close or are you more like relaxed, just hanging out, smiling? Uh, are you overthinking a lot? So a lot of like mental chatter. Is there hesitation? Are you quiet? Like, you feel like you can't speak up. Is there any fear and saying anything they wouldn't agree with? All those things are things to look look for when you're around certain people. I made a friend and we're not really friends. <laughs> so I don't know, we had some type of energy that brought us together that made us feel connected. However, he would make comments like, I understand everyone else's sarcasm, but your sarcasm, I just don't get. Why would you say that to someone? If you don't understand someone's jokes. So the next one is self-comparison. And I know this is never going to end. This is a part of who we are as humans because we want to grow, we want to improve ourselves, and we naturally want what's, what's next. Like, what's the next best thing? to move towards. And because of that, we compare, we compare our lives, we compare careers and things to other people because we see those wonderful things everyone else is doing. And we also want to contribute in the same manner, right? Like nothing, nothing's wrong with that. However, it can be really toxic. It can hurt yourself. It can be debilitating, debilitating to the point where you don't take action. And you may not even realize it. So some things that I've started doing is instead of comparing myself, I reframe how I view people who I look up to and admire what they're doing. And if they have a skill that they've attained that I strive to do but I haven't reached it yet, I think about them more as a mentor and I will use whatever content they're sharing as like a teaching for me to learn from them and just re-engineer what they're doing so I can meet those same goals. And I also think of it as a friendship. If I can, I do try to be friends with these people because it definitely humanizes who they are instead of having them on this pedestal and just being like, oh my gosh, I'm so much better than me, blah, 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 blah. Bring them down to like friend level, horizontal relationship versus, you know, the vertical relationships like manager and blah, blah, blah. It allows you to see that this person isn't perfect and that there's more to what they're doing.